very much for your time. Um, your recent fight is after almost a you know, two-and-a-half-year layoff. Uh, can you just walk me through how that went for you in your own mind, how that fight went? I loved every second of it. I, um, I built the stage, built the audience, and uh, had a good opponent come over from America, and the press was there, and the, the crowd was big, and I, I enjoyed every second. You know, I've, I've really got a mentality where this is it for me, this is what I love, this is what I want to do, and you know, I can't walk to the ring with fears. I've just got to enjoy it, and I enjoyed every second of it. Having the Perth crowd there in droves was just fantastic. Now, because the before that, the last fight was in July 2009. Mm. Now, there are a number of things that were working against you, a visa problems with your opponents, opponents just pulling out at the last minute, yep. a few injuries to yourself. Uh, over that period of time, um, how are you coping uh, psychologically with it? Because you build yourself up, ready for a fight, and it disappears. But to the people on the outside, you've just disappeared off the face of the planet for nearly two and a half years. I mean, what was how, how tough was it? fighting your own, I guess, demons outside the ring? Oh, look, at first I got really frustrated, but it's been a blessing in disguise because now looking back, I kept training, I kept improving, and yeah, there are a lot of frustrations and there are a lot of things that held me back that I'm not, I can't mention, um, but the, the main thing for me was I kept at it and it was a huge test for me on how much I really wanted to do this and I kept learning, I never gave up and you know, yeah, there are times where I thought, what am I doing? You know, what am I in this sport for? There's no income coming from the boxing, nothing's happening. So for me, yeah, def definitely questioned it, uh, why I was doing it, but never questioned uh, whether I should stop or quit or retire or keep going. I just, I've always had the determination and, and the drive and my feelings always been that I don't have the natural ability um, of some of the best, so I have to outwork them in training. So I just looked at the two years off as a blessing in disguise. I improved. Uh, everyone that saw me fight Dominique Alexander saw that I improved. I was in great shape. I weighed in a kilo less than my fight two years before, which is unheard of for a heavyweight. So, oh, look, I, by the time I fought Dominique Alexander, I was so used to things going wrong that it didn't bother me. And we'll talk about Don, Dominic Alexander in a second, but I'll just pull you up on, you said there's a few things you, you can't mention were going on outside mm. the ring. Is, is there any particular reason you can't mention those? or just Oh, they're just, just things with confidential contracts and, oh, okay. and some of the politics. Um, rather than say I'm a victim of this or that, it's just you know things that I've got to deal with. And, and, and later in my career, I'll probably be able to talk about them. But right now, I just keep quiet and you know, put my head down and, and get back into the gym. Okay, so there are, obviously, because it's a professional uh, sport you're in, mm. there are those contractual obligations that do stop you from or get in the way of just being the pure, solid athlete and performer that you know you can be and want to be. Yeah, it's a very different sport. I often tell people being a boxer is like being a recording artist or something. There's contracts, there's you've got to build a stage, it's all about money. It's not just a sport where you put into some rankings and things are set up for you. It's It's very different, so... Uh, there's a lot more to the boxing world uh, than people realise and I often talk about this stuff on my Twitter and, and people can't believe some of the stuff I go through for this sport and um, I can tell you what, there's not a lot of money in it until you get to the very top so I'm trying to break through to that top rankings and until you get there, it's a really hard road but like anything, if you're passionate about it, it, it it's not that hard, you know, you love it because I, um, whenever I've had a couple of weeks off or s since my fight I have because I had elbow surgery I found it quite boring without boxing. So as much as I you know, might complain, oh, I want to fight, I want to fight, I'd much rather be training and waiting than uh, just giving up. And what about the si being signed on with uh, Don King? Um, I mean, that was, was back in 2008. I mean, that, that must have been to be signed on with Don King. Now, for better or for worse, he is Don King. Mm. You must have been thinking, well, here I go. Yeah, and he helped me achieve the goals I had, which was my goals were to fight in America. I did that twice, met a lot of my heroes, trained in America, so it was a fantastic ride. And um, since my visa expired and a few things fell through, I've fallen off the radar. So uh, a lot of people say to me, oh, why isn't Don King getting a fight? And well, why would he? You know, I've got to prove myself, and I've done that with Dominique Alexander, and they're very happy with my performance. So... You know, it, the, the boxing world doesn't revolve around me, so I've got to prove myself and, and get back in the mix. And what what about the Dominic Alexander fight? I mean, he has been described as a journeyman. How, yep. Going into that fight, it wasn't just a fight that you needed to last until the end and then hope for a split decision. You, you needed to dominate that fight, which you did. So the concerns going into a fight like that, because even though he's a journeyman, journeymen know how to fight. He's yep. been around uh, longer than you have. And was, was he ever a, a realistic threat to you? 
Uh, the reason I didn't think he was a threat is because I've watched him fight and he's very skillful, he's very flashy, he's very fast. But uh, I just knew that I had more willpower than him and more determination and I was fighting for more. He fights for money. Um, and whenever he's fought anyone at my level, you know, or guys that are world champions or top 10, he hasn't had that same sort of confidence. So I, I just had this feeling that it didn't matter how good he was, I would outwill him and eventually I'd get to him. Uh, but what I did plan to do was exactly what happened. I, I wrote in my goals for the fight that I would stop Dominique Alexander before the sixth round from body shots, and that's exactly what happened. I put him down four times, and you know, winning split decisions over journeymen and struggling with them, it's a very, very bad sign. And even though you pick up a win, it's, it really means you're not going anywhere. So to destroy Dominique just the way the world-class guys have for me, was a huge step. Because we spoke to Lucas Brown for 6PR Online before, yep. and he said, yeah, look, he was hoping to finish this year 10-0, and 0, and he did that, although the, the scalp that he picked up on the, on the weekend, he would himself say wasn't a very you know, flashy scalp. It yep. probably wasn't worth even talking about. But it is about the, the quality of the opponents you now pick up as opposed to the quantity. Is that, is that the same measure you're going through? Yeah, f for me, I've had the, the building stages of my career uh, I started out as a nobody in professional boxing. I had 11 amateur fights, so I was often what's called the opponent, meaning I'm going to their hometown. Uh, you're staying in crappy little cockroach-infested hotels. You're supposed to lose. I was just lucky. I always had a lot of physical strength. I could overcome these experienced guys. Um, but eventually I started to build my record, and I just don't care about building my record unless it leads somewhere. Like the Dominique Alexander, that, the reason I picked him was because a lot of top guys had fought him, so it was a measuring stick. So uh, the one fight uh, in the Australia Pacific region that I, I'd really like that could throw me right up there is with a fighter called Carly Meehan, who fought for the yeah. World Heavyweight title twice. Yep. And um, he's been the dominant heavyweight in this region for so long, someone's eventually got to knock him off. And um, we're, uh, we're negotiating for a fight with him next year, so hopefully that comes off. Carly Meehan's a brilliant boxer. I just think that if I'm going to be top 10 of the world and make that next step, um, you know, that's a fight that can happen. Let's do it. Well, talking about your opponents, I mean, I'll just take a sidetrack for a yep. second. Uh, Barry Hall has mentioned his intention to uh, step into the boxing ring. Yep. Now, would that be would that be a fight you'd, you'd look for? Would you avoid a fight like that simply on the basis that Barry Hall is not yet a real contender? It would be, I could see it would be a big payday fight but I couldn't see it being a good fight as that stepping stone into the world's top 10. Would you consider a, a bout against Barry Hall if it showed up? If Barry Hall has a few fights and he looks like a quality fighter and he builds his resume, definitely. But I think it would be a little bit insulting to the intelligence of uh, the casual fans if I started calling out Barry Hall. I mean, he may prove to be a very good boxer, um, but at the moment he's just a footballer turning to boxing, so... Um, his management, if they have you know half a brain, are not going to put him in with me in his first year of boxing. So they're going to let him mature. They're going to let him develop. They're going to uh, get him guys that can test him, but he should beat them. You know, uh, let him learn, get the ring experience. So for me to come here, oh, I'll fight Barry Hall. I'll knock him out. Uh, Barry, I'm talking to you. I'm coming for you. I mean, everyone's just going to cringe. You give me a break, Mark. You know, focus on uh, the bigger fish. So. That's what I'm doing, and if Barry Hall proves to be a, a serious uh, boxer and, and a quality boxer, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously he brings a massive spotlight, and um, I really enjoy that big spotlight. So if Barry proves to be a, a good boxer, yeah, love it. And what about this, because we're talking about the professionalism, sorry, the professional side of boxing and the sporting side of boxing. Now, to keep your, uh, your marquee name up, you need to fight, but you, yeah. you're also prepared to sit back and wait for the fight that best suits your career. How much, how much conflict is there from promoters and, and sponsors and, and the business side of Mark DeMori uh, as opposed to what the athletic side of Mark DeMori wants to do? The push is coming from business. Yeah, well, back in 2009, I'd had a couple of fights. I was ranked 17 in the WBC, um, and Don King offered me a fight with Carly Meehan for a WBA title eliminator. I went, wow, what an opportunity. I looked at it, the money was decent, nothing special, but I said, what an opportunity. Signed the contract. Uh, my manager, Ted Allen, passed away, unfortunately, a few weeks later, and then uh, things really just fell apart. And um, after that, I thought, no, no, I only want big fights. You know, I can get these big fights. Then I... Um, offered to fight David Tua and his management rejected me. Uh, they went straight for a Shane Cameron fight. Then they called me up to fight Hasim Rockman in New Zealand. I said yes, they never called back. So I was waiting for these big fights. 
And what I learnt was, as much as you want these big fights, until you're at the top and everyone's chasing you, you've got to keep busy. So that's why even having some smaller fights uh, in between, while people might go, why are you fighting that guy? What I've learnt is it's a lot better than just uh, sitting by the side and waiting because I ended up waiting over two years. Now, I'm sitting here talking to you. This is the first time I've actually had, had the opportunity to talk to you. And you're coming across uh, measured. You, you're coming across um, almost far too intelligent to be a boxer as, as the way you're mapping out your career and your, and your future because we're all kind of used to the, I mean, the, the, the outside on the fringes punter is, is used to the flamboyance of the heavyweights. I mean, yep. it's, it is the area where is the, there's that romance, there is the, the, the characters, the bigger-than-life sort of characters. And, I mean, you're wearing a feather boa. So Why not? Yeah, what, what is it? Can you switch that on and off? Can you switch that flamboyance on and off at will? Because I've seen YouTube videos of you boxing with a mullet. So Yeah, look, I don't take um, life too seriously. I take my boxing very seriously. I train hard. I, I really enjoy the fights, but... Um, I'm, I'm not under any illusion that uh, I'm someone special or I'm this amazing person and I've got to take everything seriously. It's, you know, life is fun for me. It's about happiness and fun and, and, and having a laugh. I take my boxing seriously, but at the same token, I understand this is entertainment. People in the crowd, that there's 1% of the population appreciate a good quality, skillful boxing match, like a Floyd Mayweather style fight, but everyone loves entertainment and everyone loves to see big heavyweights throw bombs. So. There's the element of me where when I fight a Dominique Alexander, part of me wanted to beat him in his own game, out-jab him for 10 rounds. But that would have put everyone to sleep. So I had to give that part up and say, no, this is a show. This is entertainment and people pay their hard-earned money. So I've got to give him something to go home and go, wow, that was amazing. So putting him down four times the body shots, giving him a little shoulder shimmy, you know, having a laugh. You know, those sort of things are part of the show. So for me, um, I call it theatre with punches. That's what this is. I'm, I'm an entertainer. I've chosen boxing as my platform. And uh, look, I, people say, oh, you're a bit intelligent to be a boxer. Well, um, I think also being comfortable in the media, a lot of boxers haven't had that exposure and uh, they don't come off too well. It's sort of, oh, yeah, love to fight and I'll smash him. And oh, yeah, you know, a lot just love fighting and that, you know, that sort of that sort of language and people often, you know, stereotype the boxer. But a lot of the guys I train with and my brother, you know, he works in the corporate world, takes his suit off and puts his boxing gloves on and he fights professional too. So there's all types in boxing.